You have great songs, a tight band, and are ready to leap from local stages to a national tour. You start firing off emails to venues across the country, hoping for just a few to respond. Maybe you've even tried mapping out a grand tour, only to end up exhausted and barely breaking even. It's an all-too-common headache that leaves many indie bands disillusioned and in debt. Let's face it, the shotgun approach to booking might seem like casting a wide net, but what happens? Most venues don't bite, and those that do might not even cover the gas to get there. Or perhaps you're caught in the relentless circuit city after city, night after night, with no time to even enjoy the places that you're visiting. It's a grueling grind that pays more in mileage than in memories, at least positive ones. Today on the Book Your Band podcast, we're turning tour planning chaos into a replicable strategy. We'll explore proven techniques like the Link Circuit and the Basin Link, which have transformed how bands tour, maximizing both profits and experiences. We're not just filling dates, we're making each show count. So tune in as today's show lays the groundwork for sustaining your tour financially and energetically. Let's get to it. Every day, aspiring musicians dream of getting out of their garages and taking their songs on the road for the world to hear. But not everyone's successful at making a living as a gigging musician. There's a right way and a wrong way to navigate the music business. And whether you're looking to book your first gig or plotting an extensive world tour, this show will help you demystify the live music industry by providing first-hand insights from artists and professionals who are doing it at the highest levels. Hey there, I'm Tony Neely, and this is the Book Your Band Podcast. Hey folks, welcome to the Book Your Band Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tony Neely. Today we're doing something a little different. We are going to be doing a solo episode. So most of our shows to this point, actually all of them to this point, have been with a guest. But today, you're just getting me. I've worked as a gigging and session bassist for the last 25 years. Throughout that time, I've played everything from coffee shops to large festival stages all across the United States. And now that I'm slowing down on gigging myself, I have a heart to share what I've learned throughout these years in order to help aspiring musicians learn how to navigate the live music industry so that they can turn their music hobby into an income-generating music career. And one way that I've seen indie musicians struggle is figuring out the best way to plan a tour. Some get overwhelmed and decide to just remain hometown heroes. Others embark on a haphazard cross-country disaster that loses money and leaves a bitter taste in their mouth for touring. So today, I'm going to give you four strategies for planning a tour. I'll also tell you which one I would personally recommend in 2024 to make the most money and have the best experience on the road possible. So why do bands tour? Why not just stay at home in Bucksnort, Tennessee, playing at the local VFW week in, week out? Touring is a powerful tool for any artist. It's about more than just playing live music. It's about making a living, reaching new audiences, and building a loyal fan base. And yes, it's also about the travel. Getting to see new places, meet new fans, it's awesome. If it's done right. From selecting the right venues to coordinating travel arrangements, the challenges of touring are numerous. Ensuring the financial viability of a tour is perhaps the trickiest part of all, trying to balance between well-paying gigs and shows that may pay less but offer greater exposure or market penetration. Planning a tour is a complex process that involves juggling logistics, finances, and promotions, all while trying to ensure that every show brings you one step closer to your goals. We'll talk about marketing and financing and stuff like that in future episodes, but today we are laying the foundation by discussing the best and worst strategies for planning a tour. Choosing the right tour booking strategy can dramatically affect your band's career trajectory. A thoughtful approach can help you maximize both earnings and fan engagement, reduce burnout, and avoid the financial pitfalls that many fall into. It's not just about getting out there, it's about being smart about how you do it. So there are actually four different strategies that indie bands use to plan their tours. Each has its strengths and challenges, and the choice of which to use can make all the difference in achieving your band's goals and ensuring that your tour is a success, both artistically and financially, because again, this is the music business, not the music hobby. The first strategy is what I call the shotgun approach. 
If you've never been near a shooting range or shot at cans on your grandpa's farm, a shotgun doesn't fire a single bullet like a pistol does. Instead, it discharges a cartridge loaded with many small metal pellets that spread out wide as they travel. Similarly, the shotgun approach to booking a tour involves spreading your efforts broadly in hopes of hitting a few targets along the way. In practical terms, this means that you blast out a massive amount of cold emails to venues all over the country. Attached to each email is your EPK or your electronic press kit and a request for any available slots that might fit into your proposed tour dates. It's a bit like throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. While straightforward, there are several reasons why this method is notoriously inefficient and costly. First, it's indiscriminate. You're reaching out to venues that may not even be a good fit for your band's style or size, which can lead to poor audience turnout and underwhelming performances. For example, one time I was hired to play upright bass for a singer-songwriter duo who landed an open slot at a showcase event at Rocket Town in Nashville. I don't know if they were booked as a joke or if it was an oversight by the talent buyer, but the entire showcase was comprised of hardcore and screamcore bands. Then there was us playing bluegrassy acoustic tunes. Needless to say, we were not a hit with the crowd that night. Oh, and did I mention they put us on at like one in the morning? So it's really important that there is good artist venue fit. Second, the response rate of cold emails can be dishearteningly low. Most venues receive hundreds of emails like this weekly, and yours may simply get lost in the shuffle even if you are a good fit for the venue. Moreover, the logistics can turn into a nightmare with the shotgun approach. You could end up with a schedule that has you crisscrossing the country, incurring hefty travel costs, without enough time or proper alignment between gigs to make the tour financially viable. Not to mention that many of the venues you book this way won't provide you a guarantee, so you may show up and only make $50 off the door that night if you make anything at all. If you do find yourself needing to use the shotgun approach, specifically to fill in dates on a tour schedule, here are a few tips to make the most of it. First, Instead of a blanket bombing strategy, try to at least segment your emails based on the type of venues that typically host bands like yours. Tailor your EPK to highlight why you're a good fit for each venue. Second, be sure to follow up. Don't just send one email and hope for the best. Follow up a couple weeks later. A general reminder can sometimes move your email from the missed to the booked category. Because again, they're getting hundreds of emails. If you follow up and say, hey, just seeing if you caught my email, still hoping to come play your venue, that might be able to get you some points with that venue. Third, stay organized with a CRM. A CRM is a customer relationship management system that can track which venues you've contacted, their responses, follow-up dates, etc. This can help you maintain a semblance of order and strategy within the chaos. I actually suggest you doing this no matter which of the four booking methods that you decide to go with. I personally use an app called Modern for CRM service. In the show notes, I've shared a link where you can get lifetime access to the Modern platform for a one-time cost of $37. Not only does that provide their CRM services, but it also offers unlimited web hosting as well. All of that for $37 one time. It's well worth it for your band. While these tips can improve your odds, I'd still caution you against relying solely on the shotgun approach. It's generally seen as the least effective method for booking a tour, particularly if you're hoping to minimize costs and maximize the impact of your performances. Moving on to our second strategy, it's called the circuit model. This is the classic approach to touring that's used by everyone from Paul McCartney and Radiohead to Taylor Swift and Beyonce, in which you traverse across a region or the country at large playing shows. In the circuit model, a band plays a sequence of shows across a series of cities often following a logical route to minimize travel times and expenses. So you might go Atlanta to Knoxville, Knoxville to Charlotte, Charlotte to D.C., rather than going D.C. to Miami, to Nashville, to Los Angeles, to Philly. This approach allows bands to cover a region or even the entire country systematically. While the traditional circuit model was to play one night per city, some bands with larger followings are now playing many residencies for three to four nights at a venue before moving on to the next stop in their circuit. For example, 
my favorite band, Fish, might start with three nights in Noblesville, Indiana, then hit two nights at the United Center in Chicago, followed by one night in Philadelphia, and wrap up with four nights at Madison Square Garden in New York. There are several advantages to this model. First, since it's the traditional touring model, there's a wealth of resources available to help navigate this approach. From booking agents who are experienced in such tours to online guides detailing venue specifics. The shows themselves are often higher paying, making it financially viable if executed correctly. However, the circuit model isn't without its drawbacks. The schedule can be grueling, with little time left to actually experience any of the cities that you visit. It's basically load in, play, load out, drive, rinse, and repeat. This can lead to tour fatigue and a feeling of disconnection from the places and people you perform for. Additionally, because every show needs to pull in enough revenue to cover extensive travel and accommodation costs, there's high financial pressure on each performance. For indie bands, this model can be particularly challenging. Without the established fan base of larger acts, guaranteeing high enough ticket sales to make each show profitable can be a daunting task. The financial risks are higher, and the payoff is not always guaranteed. But, if you're considering using the circuit model strategy for booking a tour, here are some tips to make it work even with a tight schedule. First, spend extra time planning on the front end. Map out your tour dates and routes meticulously to avoid backtracking or excessive travel times. Remember, time and miles equal money. Second, make the most of your days off. Plan to use your off days for rest or for exploring the cities you're in, which can also be an opportunity to promote your band locally through radio shows or small acoustic sets. Also, be sure to budget in some extra per diem on these days for trying some local restaurants and visiting landmarks. Third, establish local partnerships. Build relationships with local promoters and other bands along your tour route. For example, if you're a punk band who's playing a tour stop in Chattanooga, my town, Find a Chattanooga-based punk band with a solid social media following and tap them to open up for you. This can help improve your turnout and reduce promotional costs. While the circuit model is a tried and true method, it requires careful consideration and planning, especially for bands that don't yet have a large following. By understanding both the potential rewards and the inherent risks, you can better decide if this is the right touring strategy for you. Hey there, I hope you're loving this episode so far and are getting some really helpful tips to build your career as a live musician. If you're a musician who's new to the live music industry and you're looking for step-by-step -step assistance to help you book your first paying gigs, then you're going to love my five-day garage to stage crash course. In this free online course, we cover my perform framework that will tell you everything you need to know to get started booking gigs including how to start making contacts in the live music industry, how to put together an EPK, how to contact talent buyers, what to do the day of your gig, and how to keep your momentum going after your encore. To sign up, just go to my website at www.bookyourbandpodcast.com and fill out the short registration form. Again, this is a 100% free training, but spaces are limited, so sign up today. Thanks so much. Now back to the show. Next step is the linked circuit approach to booking that builds on the traditional circuit model, but with a twist that can significantly enhance both profitability and audience engagement. Let's say that you've secured a high paying show, say $1,500 or so in Atlanta. Five days later, you have another similar payday lined up in Lexington, Kentucky. We'll call these your anchor shows. Instead of leaving those days in between your anchor shows empty or just simply traveling on those days? The link circuit approach involves booking smaller gigs along the route. These could be in smaller capacity rooms or even house shows, essentially any opportunity to play and sell merch that fits neatly into your travel schedule. For example, after your Atlanta gig, you might hit a smaller venue in Chattanooga, then a house show in Knoxville, and maybe another small college town gig in Berea, Kentucky before reaching Lexington. This strategy not only fills out your tour calendar, but also maximizes your earnings during the travel days between your anchor shows. This approach, which was also discussed at length in the very first episode of the Book Your Band podcast with guest Matt Adler, has several key benefits. First, it provides more show opportunities, maximizing your time on the road. 
Every night you play is an opportunity to get paid and connect with new fans. Second, by playing in smaller venues or less typical concert settings, you can reach audiences who might not attend larger shows, effectively expanding your fan base. This can be particularly valuable for indie bands looking to build their following organically. Additionally, by covering more regional ground, you ensure better visibility across a wider area, which can be crucial for long-term growth in establishing a presence in new markets, especially when it comes time to start trying to book your band at smaller music festivals. Here's some practical advice for implementing the linked circuit method to booking a tour. First, this only works if you have those solid anchor shows in place. Look for high-paying gigs that can anchor your tour financially. They may be in big cities, or like Matt Adler shared, a lot of times his anchor shows are at camps or youth conferences or something like that. These shows should ideally be spaced enough to allow you to travel and play additional gigs in between. Second, when planning the smaller gigs, consider the travel time and the potential fan base in each location. Opt for venues that are easy to fill and can provide a good atmosphere for your band style. A packed house on a Tuesday night in a small cap room will help you a lot more in the long run than an empty room at a mid-cap venue on a Saturday night. Third, utilize local promoters and contacts to help book these in-between shows. They often have better insights into the local scene and can help you find suitable venues. So if you have friends in a city, reach out and ask them if they know anyone who hosts house shows or a cool brewery that has live music. A lot of times they probably even know someone who works there. Fourth, promote these smaller gigs as special, intimate shows to create buzz and draw in audiences who might prefer a more up-close and personal performance setting. I've also found that these intimate shows often lead to better merch sales than playing mid-cap rooms. If someone chats with you before and after the show, they just feel more of a connection and are more likely to buy a shirt or an album from you at the end of the night. The link circuit approach can transform the way that you think about touring from merely moving between big shows to creating a continuous flow of performance opportunities. By intelligently linking your gigs, you not only make better financial use of your touring schedule, but you also deepen your engagement with fans across regions. Again, listen to episode one with Matt Adler to hear more about his use of the link circuit approach. Our final strategy for today's episode, and what I think is one of the best methods for artists to try in 2024, is the base and link method. It's a highly efficient approach that differs significantly from the link circuit by focusing on deeper local engagement and building sustained presence in specific areas. The Basin Link strategy involves selecting a city to act as a home base for one to two weeks. Within this space, you perform an anchor show, usually a well-playing gig that sets the financial tone for your stay there. And then from there, you book additional shows within a one to two hour radius of your base city. This allows for a concentrated burst of gigs in a set area, reducing travel costs and time, enabling more personal time to explore and enjoy each location. By staying in one region, you have the unique opportunity to truly connect with the local scene and its audience, establishing relationships that can be beneficial for future tours. This method not only helps in building a solid fan base in a specific area, but also allows for a diverse range of performances, including brunch sets and late night gigs, as opposed to just planning those same old, same old nighttime gigs at traditional venues. This is the go-to touring strategy used by Adam and Cherish Hamby of the Dark Waters Project. This husband and wife dark grass duo manages to book over 200 shows a year and stays on the road for up to 16 months at a time, all by following the base and link method of touring. They've generated steady income from a mix of guarantees, tips, and merch sales, all while being able to expand their audience, build relationships with new venues, and enjoy actually being in a city for an extended period of time rather than constantly being on the go from one town to the next. Interestingly, bands like the Dark Waters Project occasionally blend this method with elements of the shotgun approach, especially when filling dates. They reach out broadly within the local region to secure gigs during their stay, ensuring that their schedule is packed and productive essentially looking at any extra bookings as icings on the cake beyond their established anchor shows. Setting up a base can be as creative as the tour itself. 
Some bands stay with friends or family. Others might arrange accommodations with local churches. Or sometimes venues will actually offer lodging in exchange for playing multiple shows at their venue. This flexibility in lodging helps reduce costs and increase the number of potential shows since you're anchored in one area and can easily travel back to it after each performance. Then after a week or two, you just move on to the next Bay City where you have another anchor show lined up and you start the process all over again. It is worth noting that bands generally have the majority of their dates lined up during each stop and do not simply wait until they get there to start filling these slots. However, you do have the flexibility to add more shows since you will be there for an extended period of time. Playing a mid-cap room at 8pm? Why not just pick up a brunch gig at 11.30? There you have it folks, the four tour booking strategies, Shotgun, Circuit, Link Circuit, and Bass and Link. As you consider these strategies, think about your band's goals, available resources, and where your fan base is strongest. Choosing the right approach can make all the difference in not just surviving on the road, but truly thriving and growing your audience for bigger and better tours in the future. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Book Your Band podcast. If you found today's episode helpful in any way, please consider taking a moment to leave us a review. Just a few seconds of your time to post a review and comment can greatly help expand the show's reach and continue to support bands like yours in navigating the live music industry. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.